close they are. The air stinks of tarmac. I'm just gonna stand here and go. Oh, what a fab! I'd love to do that job. I'd be in a, in a constant state of being high. I think. I didn't get anything else done last night because I started talking and then it was half past four so basically talk for about half an hour <laughs> anyway that's nothing that I can't get done today so god I need a beard trimmed I've got the other four to drop in today I'm hoping fingers crossed that they're a little bit easier um, but there's only one way to find out isn't there and let's get on it so here we go Four more 6.30 singles. I'll see if I can get some footage. Look at that. Not often that happens, is it? I just stripped that off the cable and it all came down in one nice little, uh, little roll look. Now I'll just throw it on the floor. Oh, look at that, it's even stayed. Awesome. Right, something rather odd has happened. See the gap? There's a gap in between those and those. Now I thought that the cable would sit, it would just sit on top and roll round off the front and I'd be able to get a measure on it. But it's happened, but that one, I thought obviously I've, I've made a mistake. I don't know what I was gonna do, but I've made a mistake. But this one's the same. So it's as, as they're coming over the back, they're not sitting flat, I don't, I'd, there'd be some sort of explanation behind it, but they actually, it's pushing them up into the air and, allow, and not allowing the bend to sit on there, which I'm finding a bit odd. Because if it had happened with that one, yeah, I've made a mistake then and I need to rectify it, but it's happened with this one as well, so I'm assuming it's going to happen with those two. It's strange, it's never, I was going to say it's never happened before, but I've never had to bend cables that big in that short space before so that's why it's never happened before quite weird the frustrating thing about this is i've got a, a point an anchor point at the back but i have to walk go i keep going around i tension that and then i'm going to pull it to get it set on the on the where the lug's going to be mounted it's just a bit of a pain in the bum And then, because I want it to bend in over, what I'm going to do is pull it out over to create that bend. That's the point where it's going to bend. So let's have a look. I hope I don't snap the rope. I didn't realise that. It's only a six mil bit of rope. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. I would prefer not, obviously, to have to bend 630mm single cables. 
because you just want them to drop straight in. But if you ever find a way, if you ever find yourself up against this, that's a way of doing it, trying to find an anchor point to bend against that point. Obviously you could you couldn't do it with your hands. I don't know you couldn't. Because it just need to be too strong. Right, I'm gonna flip the lug. Tell you what I do like, right? Either a ratchet screwdriver or an imp like your impact or, your, or an impact wrench. Let's have a look. Oh, batteries fell out. So obviously that was spinning when I was trying to loosen it with the ratchet. But it's come out with the uh, with the ratchet's uh, in impact wrench. It's class, aren't it? I mean, I know how it works, but it's just good that it works. I think it's really good. It's good that it works. I think it's really good. How articulate of me. So that's the grey L3 in. I'm just going to go and take the wrap off that one. Transfer it to L2, pull it in the same, and then what I'm going to do is bend again, like I did, bend this out over so I can then set it back, and the lug is already mounted. Wait, I'll get some. Oh, there we go, look, loads better. Get a bit of measuring. Where is it? Where are you? There it is, look, a little bit of a measurer. So I'll run that round the back of the cable, down into the lug, transfer it over. And uh, hopefully that will be the correct measure. So I'm just going to go and transfer that onto that at the same height, really. I'm not really going to deviate from where I need to go because they're all then they're all going to have the same bend. And uh, yeah, I'll be back with you when I'm getting my measure to get done. Right, this bit's always tricky to record. It's hard to get the bloody thing in so you can see it anyway. So. I'm going to go inside of that piece of a rope. There we go. Now inside the lug, see if I can show you. I'm going to look short on here. But if you look inside, now look at the top, there's a little knobbly bit sticking out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rest my measuring cable on that knobbly bit because that's where the cable's going to hit anyway. And I'm going to try and mimic the shape of what that cable, the black one, is going to finish in with the white one, right? So that's pretty damn close. Out it comes, transfer it across. Now you might not be able to see this bit, but then I'm just going to mark it. There we go. So, let's have a butchers. So yeah, mark it there. That's my uh, green paint pen, courtesy of uh, Richie from MGL. Splendid fellow. If he gets me the cable numbers, because I've been waiting two weeks for them. Useless sod. Right. So I'm going to cut that now, strip it back, put the lug on, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do. You can see the remnants of it there, look. I should really try and paint you, lunatic. You're not going to rub it off of your finger. But basically, I'll show you what I'm going to do. So, what I've done is you put a mark on the cable and on the lug. And then what that does is when it transfers, see, if you, you pull off and go, yeah, yeah, that's, I've got, I've got that, and forget this is here, yeah, I know that's straight. But then you put it on, and the machine bites it like that, when you push it back, 
that's 10 mil even even that much it'll put a bit of stress on the uh, on the bolt so if you know the orientation of the lug you can marry, marry them two lads up when it's in the crimping machine you're on because I can't crimp it when it's in situ because the other cable there you go look the other cables behind it so I've got to put it on get a measure get it lined up mark it bring it off and then crimp it while it's here then push it back on so yeah that's what I've got to do I'm gonna do that now excuse the headgear I'm not like going for a job in fame or wanting to be that Android blind bloke of Star Trek. That noise. Is there a louder tool in the world than that? A multi-tool. I don't know what he's cutting with it, but I bet he's about 300 foot away. Gonna, can you imagine the meeting when the... You know what? What I think, what I think John, uh, Construction sites, for me, they're just not loud enough. Construction sites aren't loud enough. Let's invent a tool that'll put the decibel level up, oh, by twofold at least. Sounds like a good idea, yeah. Let's do that. And then they invented the multi-tool. Never had anything like them. Fantastic thing for getting into tight spots and that, but good grief, the row. Trying to have a sing to myself here. Can't concentrate. Just occurred to me to actually show you what, what I'm doing because I'm an idiot. So, oh, at the top of my pen. So now there, like, that's that's it. Oh, wait, let's take that out because I sound like Mike Tyson. Right. That's where I want it to sit. It's flush to the. I've tightened that nut. It's flush to the copper plate. So I'm just going to run right the way down the centre. When my pen runs out of paint, excellent. That's just what I want. So there we go. Any one of them lines. Light shining off it a bit, but when I take that off, I know that if I keep it in that orientation, it'll go back on. In theory, right, I'll try and show you the crimp. I need about 50 hands because we crimp has sprung a leak. So to stop the oil going everywhere, I have to catch it in the high vis vest. A bit like, you know, a teenager alone in his bedroom type of scenario. So, here we go, look. I've got, I had to crimp it up because I can't hold it all in and, and video. I can't hold it with one hand, it's too heavy. So, in the machine, it's up to 290 bar at the minute. It does go to seven. I've got me cloth round. So, now it's just a matter of, oh, hang on, I'll just change where me. Hand goes, there we go. So press the remote, crimp goes on. And there, oh, you won't be able to see, it's too far away and I can't bend down. So that goes up to 700 bar. I need to release the, oh, the pressure's released now, it released itself automatically. Put that down. And this comes, this is brilliant. Comes with a magnet on that side. You stick it to the panel. Oh, I've wrapped it round my thing. There you go, stick it to the panel. So I'm gonna take this off now because it's, it's tensioned itself. And uh, let's have a look. So there we are, I, I just did the other one because you'd seen what the process was. Now I'm gonna tape it up, L1, so brown and then get it fitted. And then I've got the new to do. And then up there, there's a load of earths I'm doing and I'm assured that over there in a box is a load of um, lugs to be able to do it. So, we'll have a go at that. Right, although I still look like Beyond Borg from the 1970s, um, we're done. Taking it forward, it's not a good idea to bring cables up the back of a panel and then sweep them over like that. Bad design. And then, obviously, I'd want to bring them in. Realistically, you should be bringing cables this size, 
you should be bringing them in straight, straight from the from the gland, straight into the lug. They shouldn't be bending. But due to the what happened up the top, I ain't got that option. I have to bend them back. But they're done now, so let's have a quick look. So there we go. Drop over the top, and then in and down into the lugs. It's been a, a learning, I'll say it's been a learning curve. I've got to tidy up now and do it, get these earths sorted. But yeah, if anybody else in the future suggested doing this, I would strongly, <laughs> strongly advise them not to. Or if they want to do it, don't give me a ring. That's starting to get right on my nerves now, that. Because it doesn't sit right, it doesn't click in properly, it keeps falling out. It's like, let the elephant man of batteries look. I am not an animal. Yes, you are. Right, what have we got? False floor, right? Cables, coiled up, massive coil of cables underneath, right? So I need to remove the floor to get the coil up. But somebody has pulled the cables through Honestly, I can't believe some people. Oh, what am I going to do now? Look at that dust I'm breathing in. Oh, terrible. Oh, God, my life. The context, look at me. Not like there's a lot of room behind here. All scrunched up. Not like I'm doing a poo. I guess I won't be using that nut. Cracked. And I haven't even done anything to it, I've just took it off. I went to put the um I went to put the gun on it and the ratchet the the ratchet. The socket didn't fit. I've just dropped the bloody phone. Yeah, the socket didn't fit. I thought, oh, what's going on with that? Anyway, I've spun it off. Nut, nutcracker. Uh, hunger burp, that. I've had a break again all day, have I? Starving myself to death. So the kids don't have to eat spaghetti oops on toast. Walking around with holes in the shoes and stuff. Dad, can we put the heating on, please? No. Put a coat on. But it's got holes in. I know. You on about your phone? All done. Stuck in traffic. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's that week all tidied up. I've got to revisit when they do the outside generator panel. But that won't be till after Christmas. So that's that job wrapped up. Done a bit of a tidy up. Well as much as uh, anyone in the electrical trade tidies up and everything's buttoned up finished the earth i forgot to show you the earth bar it was the most inconveniently placed earth bar in the world oh man every i had put everything on the panel which was behind me get the cable measured then i had to turn around and yeah it was awkward it was it was a pain but got it done got it knocked off and i'm going home and it is half 12 so it should take me about when I get through this traffic there's a four way traffic uh, traffic light system at the roundabout so it's just queued up to the roundabout hopefully when I get on it I'll be uh, swiftly home about 45 minutes I hope so again thanks for watching if you got this far remember little thumbs up and uh, I'll see you on the next one which I'm visiting uh, the capital city again, so next week I'll be back in London. So thank you very much, see you later, bye bye.